Hello, my friends. Good day to you, wherever you are. Uh, I'm pausing for a couple of days on the Vigyan Bhar Bhairava Tantra commentaries. I'm traveling at the moment, but I'll be sure to get back. But today I want to share with you an insight. I want your opinion. And actually, I will send this video to quantum physicists and others um, to get their opinion as well. So let's, uh, uh, let me share what I want to share with you. Everybody now agrees in the field of uh, uh, quantum physics that uh, the objects that we observe, the material objects that we observe are ultimately quantum in nature, even large objects not just minuscule, they are quantum in nature as a fundamental um, reality. Even though we experience them as objects, their uh, source or their fundamental reality is quantum. And nobody disagrees that the so-called objective world is quantum. Uh, of course, I wrote a book called Quantum Healing many years ago, which was uh, essentially vilified by mainstream, including, most importantly, quantum physicists. Currently, I'm writing a book called Quantum Body, because if the body is a material object, it also has to be quantum. And this time, I have, uh, as my co-authors, Jack Tuzinski, who is a quantum physicist, and uh, Brian Fertig, who is a neuroendocrinologist like myself. And it's about the quantum nature of our so-called physical body. But here's the real crux of what I want to uh, share with you. You know, if you go to chat GPT or advanced AI, you say, is the mind quantum? And uh, do you agree with Deepak Chopra and others who think the mind is quantum? they'll basically say, no, it's pseudoscience. No real um, academic and qualified uh, quantum physicist would agree that the mind or consciousness or whatever, the observing mind is, is quantum in nature. And uh, Deepak Chopra's views and even those of other uh, scientists who have shared that view is uh, is pseudoscience. It's not real science. So here's my uh, question to all of you who are listening. Is there an observed object without an observing entity that we call the mind? Essentially, the mind is that helps us observe. Can there be an observing object without an observing mind? Is there an object or the experience of an object without the mind? And the answer should be obvious, you know, that the observer and that which is observed are entangled in every, um, every experience. There can't be something called observation unless there's an observer, the mind, <laughs> And there's something to be observed, the object, the physical object that is considered to be quantum in nature. The answer is obvious. You need both observer and observed to have an observation. So if the observer is the mind and the mind and that which is observed are entangled as the experience, and in the deeper reality, if observer and observed are actually one, then how is the mind not quantum? What is the argument against the quantum mind? The mind obeys those principles. You know, it's a field of possibilities. Let's say consciousness instead of mind. Consciousness is a field of possibilities. Consciousness is unpredictable. Consciousness correlates and is entangled as mind-body, body-universe, 
all is a unified activity. Consciousness is creative. Con consciousness takes leaps of creativity through discontinuity. And uh, consciousness is, uh, is uh, unlike any object that we see, and yet without it, there's no observing object. And if they are entangled, and in the deeper reality, subject and object are one, then what is the argument against quantum mind? Just that we cannot do experiments with it? Well, we need the mind to do experiments. We need consciousness to conceive and construct and, and, and share ideas and uh, even talk about the objective world which itself is a construct for human perceptual activity, modified consciousness. So mind is quantum, body is quantum, universe is quantum, and consciousness is the source of the quantum mind, the quantum body, and the quantum universe. What's the problem? What's the argument against it? Please share with me your ideas and if you're a scientist or a physicist please share also i want to learn what the argument is i think the argument comes from naive realism which believes in subject object split which believes in matter as the ontological primitive and which also believes that the human look of the universe is the real objective universe there's no real objective universe it's a species specific perceptual activity please share your ideas comments um, um, disagreements uh, over here if you will i'd like to start a conversation on this topic quantum mind quantum body quantum universe Thank you.